Hello everyone and welcome to a most spectacular game that happened uh, only recently. Uh, it was sent to me by David Lada, so thank you for that. It's uh, truly an amazing game and it could be definitely a contender for our game uh, of the year. But you guys, as always, will decide on that. It's a game between uh, Dutch international master. Uh, he is currently uh, 20 years old, Liam Vrolik, uh, and uh, a Spanish player uh, currently age 16, Jose Antonio Garrido Diaz. And sorry about not having um, a newer photo of him. This is uh, from when he was 10 years old I believe when he won the uh, Andalusian championship but um, it's the only one I could find uh, but as usual we are here for the moves and this game does not disappoint when it when it comes to moves so there will be two uh, I think pretty awesome pause the video moments that you guys will enjoy uh, let's dive uh, straight into it and see what happened it's from the Semana Santa Alicante tournament uh, and well this is uh, not something you see every day uh, so Rolik with the white pieces opens with d4. We have d5 by Jose Antonio, uh, c4, e6, knight to c3, and c6. So we have the semi-slav defense on the board. Uh, and uh, while usually knight to f3 and e3 are the most popular ideas here, uh, Liam uh, strikes in the center with e4 right away. And this is all uh, perfectly perfectly fine, all standard theory. D captures an e4, knight captures, and the bishop to b4 check. So here, uh, of course, we block this, bishop to d2. Queen captures on d4, now attacking uh, the knight here, and the queen is threatening to win the knight with check, but bishop captures on b4. Again, this is all well-known theory, so both players are, um, uh, of course, still know this. Uh, queen captures on e4, uh, delivering a check to the king, bishop to e2, and now capturing on g2 would be very, very tricky. If you capture on g2, then we play bishop f3, the queen has to go back, now we play knight e2, then the rook comes to g1, and black is not going to have a fun time playing this so here as this is still familiar territory knight to a6 we attack the bishop here and bishop to d6 so of course we do not want to give up control of this diagonal uh, we do not want to allow the black king to castle uh too too easily so here queen captures on g2 now this can be played uh, and here comes the move uh that uh well it will astonish uh, all of you. So not the bishop to f3 here. It's, uh, you, of course, we could play this, but queen to d2. Uh, we sacrifice a full <laughs> rook. And uh, the, the black queen uh, can't even dream about capturing this rook. If you capture the rook, then, okay, not queen g5, as the e7 square is guarded by the knight. I know some of you guys were thinking that, but uh, rather we castle queen side here. And now there is no defense. Now bishop to f3 is the threat uh, of just winning the queen, as the h2 pawn is uh, guarded by the bishop. But also we can just move the dark square bishop and checkmate the black king. And there is really nothing you can do here. Uh, if if you play something like bishop to d7, then of course you prevent checkmate, but bishop uh, bishop to f3 just traps the black queen. And if you try to save the black queen with something like queen e4, then bishop e7, it's game over. There's no defense against uh, queen to d8 with check. So instead, after queen to d2, we have knight to f6. Again, this is still a known position. Uh, bishop to f3, now the queen has an escape square, queen to g6, and here we have castle's queen side. Again, you have this problem of if the bishop moves, how are you stopping queen to d8 checkmate? Or even bishop to d7 uh, isn't uh, all that uh, all that impressive here. If you try something like bishop to d7, then uh, again, knight to e2, we're going to play rook g1, we're going to bring the knight to f4, we're going to attack this knight at some point, weaken the d7 square. So... Uh, not a lot of fun. So instead, after castling queenside, we have e5. We have to give up a little bit of material just to free up this uh, square for the light square bishop. And then uh, the rook will be guarding the d8 square. So bishop captures on e1, uh, on e5, and the bishop to e6 now. And okay, we've prevented checkmate. Uh, the rook now covers the d8 square, and we've saved our queen. So here, knight to e2, we're going to continue development. Rook g1, knight f4, all uh, very good ideas. So queen to f5 now, getting the queen to a little bit of a safer square with tempo as the bishop on e5 is hanging and now bishop to f4 uh, and here you could consider castling uh, but black still says no it's, it's early for this and plays queen to c5 with the idea of just gobbling up the c4 pawn as it's a uh, well, uh, a fairly important defender of the of the white camp uh, and uh, uh, interestingly uh, you could uh, well, you could just gobble it up right away. Instead, okay, you could play something like bishop captures on c4, uh, but... Uh 
uh, for some reason he he did not enjoy this uh, it seems that uh, although this is still a known position you can give up the c4 pawn even the a2 pawn and the white will still have a, a very nice game so okay uh, he played queen to c5 he wanted to bring his king uh, queen to a, to a more active square now you are putting more pressure here you are putting pressure on f2 uh, and now comes knight to c3 again uh, giving up the c4 pawn and this is what you should do here queen captures on c4 is still a known move in the position uh, but here instead of queen captures on c4 we have finally castles king side and it is now only as of move 16 that we have a completely new game uh, so let's see how Leon goes about this. He plays bishop to d6 now, attacking the queen and the rook. And of course, uh, Jose Antonio uh, saw this and he was very happy to give up the rook. He's now up two pawns and he doesn't mind giving up the exchange to uh, alleviate the pressure a little bit. But um, uh, Liam is not interested in that. He plays rook to g1 and now you can see that there is a whole lot of firepower aimed towards that black king. And uh, how do you... How do you improve your position here with black? Well, at bishop to f5, it is definitely the strongest move uh, because it prevents the white king from escaping here. It remains on the c file, while also you are preparing bishop back to g6 to uh, kind of gain more control over the uh, the g file. Uh, but that's exactly what Liam doesn't allow. Here he plays rook captures on g7. And now when you see it, of course, you believe it. It makes sense. The queen is coming to g5, rook is coming to g1, bishop is coming to e5. How can black ever defend this? Uh, well, we have to capture it. Uh, we have king captures on g7, queen to g5 with check, bishop to g6. Now, uh, luckily, we have this move and bishop to e5. Now, we're just threatening to pick up the knight with the queen and that's pretty much it. So, queen to e6 is the only move that saves the game for black. We have to defend the knight and now knight to e4. Uh, you could also consider uh, kicking away the queen with bishop to g4, but uh, bishop to g4 is uh, uh, combined with knight to, e, uh, knight to e4. The only difference is now uh, you are uh, kind of uh, leaving up the option of queen gobbling up this um, uh, a2 pawn. Not right away. First, there is one move that has to be played, and that is h6. So now you're saying, okay. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, just trade everything off. Uh, but now white will have to capture an f6. So bishop captures an f6 with check. King to h7 and now queen to h4. With the very elegant idea of knight g5 check. This will fork the king and the queen. And white wins the game. So here queen captures an a2. Uh, still, it, it looks like the white king is under attack as well. Uh, and how do you win this? Well, uh, the uh, automatic knight g5 seems like it's doing uh, something, but it's really not. Uh, after king to g8 and queen captures on h6, it seems like you are going to checkmate black very easily, but uh, there's queen b1 check, there's bishop on g6. And now after king d2, rook a to d8, we try and give up the, the rook, but of course white is not interested in that. White wants to checkmate the black king. King e3, rook f to e8, check, king to f4, and now finally queen to f5 with check eliminates the bishop and all hope for white from uh, for delivering checkmate or even uh, winning the game. King g3, queen captures, and now black is just up too much material and winning. So uh, instead, after queen captures on a2, we have bishop to g5. This is the good stuff. This is the move you had to find. Uh, and now uh, comes the big question. Uh, how do you defend this? Well, uh, the only the, uh, the only good idea is h5. However, it was not played in the game. It's very, very difficult to calculate, but I will show it as you guys uh, are demanding it. So knight to f6 check. This is what we would play. King to h8, and now after bishop captures on h5, it seems like black is completely falling apart. Queen b1 check, king d2, and now rook a to d8 with check. King e3, rook f to e8 check, and now after knight captures on e8, rook captures, uh, bishop to e7. This is how we uh, prevent losing this with white, but now queen e4 check, and we force a queen trade. This is how we survive this. Queen captures on e4, we're going to play bishop captures on e4, and now after some like rook to d7 guarding the bishop here, we would get this position where it's still possible, of course, for white to win this because, okay, for now, black is up a pawn, but we are going to uh, win at least uh, one pawn, but most likely two pawns on the queen side, and the white will have some chances of push, uh, pushing this for a win. However, uh, in the game after bishop to g5, uh, Jose Antonio did not spot h5. He played queen to c4 with check, and now comes a question. How do you play this? Uh, can you do something about the position to maybe even win this with white? Feel free to pause the video and try to find the absolute best move for white uh, while I give you a couple of seconds.
So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, beautiful, beautiful idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is King to D2. Uh, that's the good stuff and uh, here it works like a charm. The problem is if you go back with king to b1 you just go under the mask of the bishop and on knight to c5 everything just uh, piles up on that knight there is no way to actually do something and even queen captures an h6 check king to g8 uh, bishop f6 again it seems like you are so close to checkmating black but now comes bishop captures on e4 with check bishop captures queen captures with check and now everything just completely falls apart if king a1 queen a4 check we're gonna pick up the rook with check as well queen captures on d1 with check king a2 now queen d5 check king to b1 queen e4 check king to a2 and finally queen to h7 again we stop checkmate and we force uh, uh white to, to resign the game basically uh, so instead, after queen to c4 check, king to d2 was played. Congratulations to everyone uh, who spotted this. Uh, and now uh, it just doesn't seem like uh, there's a good way to play this. The d8 square is not really not uh, a question anymore because both the queen and the bishop are guarding it. So here we have queen to b4 check and now comes king to e3. Incredibly, now white completely blunders the game. Uh, the way to play this was king to e2, but uh, this game is, is so complicated that, uh, that, that it's uh, hard to make sense of what's happening. So king e2 and h5 still is a resource for, for black. However, after... Uh, king to e3, uh, there is now uh, not all that much you can do here. Now the point is, uh, but you have to find the idea for black and that is rook f to e8. Now you have completely piled up on that knight and there is no way for white to stop this. After queen h6, king g8, uh, you, you really don't have all that much to play. If rook to d4, attacking the queen, guarding the knight, just queen to f8, there's no checkmate happening, you've defended, and of course now black will win this. So, but instead, after this mistake of playing king to e3, uh, black counters with a mistake and plays h5. Uh, it, it was a useful move uh, a while ago, but now... Uh, it, it it's still a good move. Uh, it's not a bad move, but it just allows white to get back into the game. Bishop to e7 now, attacking the rook and the queen, and even this is not a problem. Queen b3 check, we have king to f4, and now comes a uh, queen to b5. And this is, okay, you are adding a queen to help out with the defense here of the, of the black uh, camp. However, uh, knight to c7 was the much needed idea here. Uh, after knight to c7, white will struggle immensely to uh, to do anything because, uh, well, let's say knight to f6 check, we just play king to h8. And now after knight captures on h5, we have queen to c4 check, and this is now, uh, well, we're just going to force a queen trade. King g3, queen captures here, we're going to play king captures, and now finally rook f to e8, and the game continues, but black will always be better. For example, rook to d7, defending the bishop, attacking the knight, knight to d5, and now let's say bishop captures on d5, c captures, and now knight to f4. Uh, the game continues, but black is always slightly better. However, after king to f4, queen to b5 was played, and now there is no way back um, uh, for, from this moment. Uh, feel free to pause the video and try to find the, the final uh, winning idea uh, for Liam while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on not playing knight to f6. We already said it's not knight to f6. Don't play that. Uh, and for those of you who were really able to do it, congratulations on spotting rook to d5. Uh, an amazing, amazing idea uh, that finishes this already a spectacular game. Uh, now, the queen no longer helps out with the defense of the king side, as you can see. And the problem is, uh, if you capture with the queen, then this fork uh, finally works. We just fork the king and the queen, and we win the game. Uh, if you don't do anything, if you just move the queen, let's say queen to a4, you pin the knight as, well, there's so much stuff here on the fourth rank. Uh, rook captures on h5, a game over. Bishop captures, queen captures, king g8, and now, of course, it's just a very, very simple checkmating pattern. Uh, and uh, interestingly, there's no way for black to prolong the game here after something like rook g8, queen h5 will be checkmate. So instead, after rook to d5, uh, Jose Antonio is forced to capture the rook with c captures on d5, uh, but now comes 
against bishop captures on h5. And interestingly, this is the only winning move, uh, and it's not uh, one that black uh, is happy to see. Because if bishop captures on h5, again, it's uh, king g8, knight f6 check, and that's it. King g7, queen to h7 is checkmate. So instead, after bishop captures on h5, we have d captures on e4, grabbing more material. Now the queen is almost there. The queen is almost ready to defend the king side, uh, but now bishop to e2 check, and that's just it. Uh, so here, king to g8, bishop captures on b5, we win black's queen, knight to c7, and now bishop to c4. Uh, we have knight to e8, uh, trying to prevent bishop to f6, but now comes queen to h6, with the threat of just queen captures bishop here, and regardless of what you play here, there is uh, nothing you can do, there is no square for the bishop, so you can't really stop this. Knight to g7 was played, uh, we have bishop to f6 now threatening checkmate, and after knight to h5 check, we have king to g5, knight captures on f6, king captures on f6, and it was in this position uh, that Jose Antonio Garrido Diaz uh, resigned the game, as there is nothing more to be done here. Whatever black plays uh, on the next move, uh, Liam will deliver this checkmate, queen to g7 checkmate, and this is definitely not something uh, we see often uh, with, with a queen and king uh, threatening to, to checkmate the black king on, uh, on the g7 square. So really a spectacular game. There were so many lines that we could have shown. I mean, uh, could have made this video last like even a half an hour, but I thought you guys would appreciate it if we show like most of them uh, and, you know, just just appreciate how how well both of them played. And uh, it, it was not a one-sided game. Uh, San Antonio really had a chance to bounce back, uh, but, uh, you know, it takes, uh, we always say it takes two to create a masterpiece, and here both of them uh, chipped in uh, a lot. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks uh, a lot uh, for sending me this uh, brilliancy. Uh, uh, so you can see how, how important it is to always uh, send me good games and use hashtag suggestion in the comments if you have a good suggestion. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Julie Mosley, uh, Chuke Vuzego Aronu, uh, Nagarjuna Ponigotu, Dave Ellis, and Pratamesh Shekhar Mahajan for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Continue continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions such as this one and whatever else happens uh, in the chess world. And of course, do comment, uh, does this qualify for the best game of 2022? Uh, see you soon.